Next question is from BBXH. Can you do social level adult sports such as soccer and bodybuilding or do they conflict? All right. It depends on what you mean by do they co uh, conflict, right? Does lifting weights improve your ability to play soccer and other sports? Yes, it does. It can actually make you much faster and more stable and strong. If your goal is to be the best bodybuilder you could possibly be, then yeah, playing, you know, focusing a lot of energy in anything else is going to take away from that. You know, we get this question all the time and I think it's, you have to understand one thing. If you want to have extreme performance in one pursuit, then oftentimes, unless the other stuff that you're doing is geared towards complementing that, you can't also pursue that kind of extreme performance in other attributes and not expect to have some detriment. Okay. So you can't be the best soccer player uh, of, of your life and also be the best bodybuilder of your life. There's going to be some, some give and take, but can you do them together, have a good quality of life and get benefits for sure. both? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. If your goal is to, you know, enjoy what you're doing and, you know, maybe lift some weights to complement soccer. I mean, that's a wonderful approach, but I think people put too much they, they fear this too much. You know what I mean? So they're like, you know what? I'm not doing anything else. I'm just going to lift weights. It's like, are you going to be like a super bodybuilder? Is that what you want to do? Or yeah. are you just trying to be fit and healthy? In I, which case, do you I feel like it wouldn't be a quaff if we didn't have this question. I feel I like know. we get every, <laughs> every know, right? quaff. We have pretty much this exact question just worded differently and, you know, insert different sport different aesthetic goal but it's you know can i be a buff soccer player like yes of course you can you know lift lift weights and play soccer you're gonna be a pretty buff looking soccer player i don't think but it's just are they conflicting well they there there's different attributes that make a great soccer player and there's different attributes that make a great bodybuilder it's just that simple and you're gonna have to put some of your effort in one of those directions and so if you are going to put them in one direction you're going to limit yourself in the other one it's that but you doesn't mean you can't be a a really fit looking soccer player or that has good amount of muscle mass on you and it doesn't mean you can't be a bodybuilder who actually plays soccer fairly well i mean you can definitely do yeah. that this you're not going to be the best like sal said the best version of yourself at it doing both of them because they are different goals i do i do have, I, I totally agree i do have one thing though that that really drives me crazy though with professional athletes when they seek out a bodybuilding coach to train them all in hypertrophy leading into their uh, very sport specific uh, pursuit uh, and I've seen this time and time again with with NFL athletes and MMA athletes uh, where they're literally just training like a bodybuilder leading up and then they they totally shit the bed when they go to perform yeah I think you have to be the the area you probably have to be the most careful is if you were an athlete. So if you're playing soccer on a fairly regular basis, uh, you, the amount of, you know, bodybuilding I would be doing would be minimal. Uh, and mainly just for... Uh, I would compliment. Do it to compliment. Right? right. It would be just enough. I mean, one to two days a week is about all you want to be doing because I'd be more worried about uh, injury. Right. I'd be more worried about training so hard and heavy to look a certain way. Then I go out on the field and I try to do something explosive and then I end up pulling or tearing something. And so that that's the one thing you got to be careful when you when you are chasing a bodybuilding goal while also playing a sport. This is this is true for sports too. Like I want to at some point, right? When you're a kid, you do it all. I mean, studies show if you do it all, you you do specific sports better by doing it that way. But at some point you specialize and then all your other training is geared towards that specialization. This is why it's so rare. It's so rare to see a professional athlete who's a professional in multiple sports. And the only one that comes to mind for me is Bo Jackson. I can't think of anybody else that I'm, I'm sure there were others. You guys probably know. I don't, I don't know of any other athletes that Played were able to sports. Yeah. That were Deion professional. Sanders, Deion yeah. Sanders. Deion you know? Sanders. Yeah. But it's super rare, right? Cause that's really hard to, yeah, to, to focus all your your focus and technique and skills and and be so good that you can be the, you know a pro level in one sport and then do it in another if you and I, I think I know what they're what they're really asking when they ask this question is am I gonna lose some gains am I gonna lose some aesthetics I mean I don't know maybe if it's real extreme I bet you most people would probably not they probably look better just because they're doing more activity. But if you let's say you're an advanced bodybuilder, let's say you've been lifting weights for 
four years and bodybuilding has been your focus and that's all you've done for four years and you've maximized muscular development. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to start playing soccer four days a week. Therefore, I'm going to lift weights only once or twice a week. Are you going to lose some of your bodybuilding gains? Yeah, of course. Of course you are because your focus has moved a little bit more in another direction. But I think people put too much weight into something like that. They worry too much about this. Um, unless you're at that extreme yeah. level, who cares? Like, go and enjoy. Well, especially at the rec league level, like they're saying. Like, yeah. we're just doing this as a weekend warrior. But you just got to be cognizant, too, that, uh, you know, you're putting that excess amount of force and stress around the joint. So I would make sure at least you incorporate a bit more mobility in your rituals uh, going into something like that. So you can just uh, maintain the health of, of yeah. your ankles, your knees, everything else. Uh, that to me, That's the most important part of this conversation is that I, actually almost all of my injuries that have happened in basketball have been probably because I was training so consistently to be a bodybuilder and put mass and size and build. And then I go get out on a basketball court and think that I'm going to be able to move the same as I was moving when I was 19 years old. And now I've got these overdeveloped quads and glutes, but then I had terrible ankle mobility and stability. And there goes my Achilles, mm -hmm. right? Or I don't, right. I don't have the same rotational strength with this new body that's 230 pounds that I did when I was 180 pounds. And so that's what you got to be probably most cautious of is if you have put a lot of energy and effort towards building a bigger uh, physique, a body bodybuilding, and then you decide to pick up a, a rec league sport, whether it be soccer, or basketball, or like that, and not realizing that you haven't trained that new version of your body to be capable of doing some of these explosive totally. movements, and that's normally where the injury occurs. So this happens has happened to me multiple times. So I need to take my own advice here. But that's probably what I'd be most concerned about yeah. when I ask this question. Less about oh well. I I still look good or whatever is if I've been really focused on building a buff body and then I go play a sport that I haven't been training for is the, the likelihood of potentially tearing something or hurt injuring yourself. Yeah, very good point.